Good morning, everybody. Hey, welcome out to a Saturday morning tax sale workshop. I'm Jake Bray. I think I'm here with Steven Swenson. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Uh, we've got a lot of important things to talk about and get to tax sale investing. So, uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, a lot of you may be here for the first time with us. Maybe you have uh, been to other trainings we've done before. If you are here for the first time, I'm just interested. Anybody that is here for the first time uh, on a live webinar with us, let us know. I'd just be interested to know in the uh, in the comments and chat section. Um, most people, I think, are familiar with us through some of the different videos that we have online. Um, to talk just a, for a second about who we are, uh, Steve and I are cousins. We've basically known each other since we were um, little kids. And uh, we talked about going into business together, or doing something when we were younger, but um, tax sales are something that, uh, that, that we became interested in uh, a long time ago now. It, it seems like it's 15, 20 years ago now, which I think it's been about. Um, but since that time, it was a pretty amazing time to start looking into tax sales back then because it was right at that point where the internet was starting to change things about uh, how things had been done and there were suddenly new opportunities that didn't exist even a, a year or two prior and, and we basically had the opportunity to watch as uh, the tax sell uh, industry as a whole uh, evolved and it's continued to evolve since then and what's good about this is that it's just become easier and easier to do. It's, uh, it's amazing how it's changed for the better uh, and you know, since that time, we've basically been dedicated to investing, dedicated to learning and teaching it uh, in places all over the country and with, uh, with members from probably every state in the country. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, when we first got started with tax sale investing, it was quite a bit different, just like Shade was talking about, than it is today. Uh, and, and like Shade mentioned, you know, really it was the Internet that changed that. You know, when we first got started, there wasn't any type of online auctions or anything like that. And, and even county records were, were, were usually not available online unless it was one of the larger counties. And that was really kind of getting into the early part of the 2000s. And so, you know, over that period of time, me and Shade uh, created a company and we provided training to, to really the, to the seminar companies. That's kind of what we did is we would uh, take our program and, uh, private label and train all of the, the seminar companies uh, students on tax sale investing and so uh, like Shade mentioned we've worked with really students from from every state in the country and from different countries as well and and in 2016 we decided to start tax sale support LLC and just really offer our training directly to the public so uh, we quit working with the seminar companies and just kind of just started to work directly with our own uh, with our own investors. Yeah, which uh, something that's different about what we think and believe uh, than maybe other companies is, you know, we've been on the seminary uh, on the seminar side of the industry before, and uh, we know what that is. You know, we're we're well experienced with it, and uh, we basically decided that we wanted to be everything um, that the seminar companies weren't. You know, we we don't like. I mean. I think that there can be good things out there with the seminar companies, but for the most part, it's a lot of hype, and they need to sell a lot of seats. They need to, they need to put up a lot of money, but not necessarily to, to try to uh, improve the quality of the training or to help be, people be successful, but because they've spent so much money trying to put on the event in the first place that they've, you know, they've got the prices way up there. There are lots of things about it that we don't like, and you know, we knew a while ago that we could do the training for much less, that we could provide a better quality training, and that, uh, that the people that really wanted to do it would, uh, would be thrilled to find a company like us where they could, uh, you know, where they could really learn how to do it, uh, which, is, uh, which is basically what we, what we focus on and, uh, and what we specialize in. Uh, something else I wanted to mention before we move on to past this point is, is this. Um, I don't know if there's any other point in history. I mean, the only other time I could look back to was um, back in the late, um, uh, it was right around uh, late 1889, 1890, 
uh, was when they uh, they did the big uh, land grab. Uh, it was the uh, that free land giveaway that maybe we've we've heard of before, where uh, where uh, sixty thousand people line up uh, for uh, for unassigned land, you know, that they could uh, go and try to claim. Well, I don't think there's been a time since then where we've had a better opportunity to get property, where we have more property that's essentially being given away. I, I think it's like a land grab. And, and part of that is due to the internet and what's happened with counties. Uh, if you can imagine, for decades, counties uh, have been holding tax cells where they Maybe they can only get out a certain number of people. It's difficult to get enough buyers out there to buy everything. Uh, and lots of counties have been doing this for many decades. And suddenly they have the internet. And they are beginning to realize and see that it doesn't do them any benefit to, uh, to hang on to these properties that there's a lot of money owed on, a, on. And so what we're seeing is counties that are being willing to forgive debts in order to get a new property owner and properties. In other words, they don't care if there's X amount of dollars owed on the property anymore. They just want to get a new property owner. In it. And so they'll drop that bid down to a hundred dollars uh, or for $50 just so they can get a new owner uh, with the property. We're seeing that all over the place, much more so than we saw 10 years ago, you know, and, and it was unheard of 15 years ago. It seems like counties are evolving and there's this opportunity right now to pick up property and to pick it up cheap. Uh, and I don't know how long it will exist. I don't know if it'll always be out there or if, uh, if, if tax sell investing will gain in popularity uh, like it has uh, in recent years. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a great point, point Shade. And, and I think part of that has to do with the county itself and the, the need for the income. Is, is, you know, we, over the last few years, we've seen different cities and counties that have gone bankrupt. And this count, the counties usually need this money more than ever before. And so I think that that's part of the reason why as well that these counties and, and states are willing to get rid of these properties uh, for, for, you know, literally pennies on the dollar because they want to put a new property owner in there so that they do have the, uh, the income coming in uh, through property taxes. Yeah, in fact, it, it's so important that they have um, – that they have a good enforcement method for collecting property taxes. And, uh, you know, I do, I think counties are evolving. I think counties are evolving and changing just like, uh, just like everything else. And as that happens, they're making it easier to, uh, to buy property because they're being more flexible for, uh, for investors. So yeah, I agree with that. I think there's a lot of opportunity. You know, when we talk about, you know, why should I invest in tax liens and deeds? Uh, well, you know, one thing about tax liens, and, and especially as we look at the stock market, we see how it's coming up and, and eventually it's going to fall, and, and it's, it's a little bit more of a, of a, of a risk than, than tax lien certificates. Uh, you know, really, we've been involved in, in training and educating people about real estate investing for, for almost 20 years now, and in that time, we haven't found a better investment strategy, a more safe investment strategy for earning interest rate return than through tax lien certificates and not a better way to buy property than through tax deeds. Yeah, in fact, I don't know if anybody is paying attention to the market right now, but there are a lot of scary indicators right now that we're about to have another um, another major loss, you know, and uh, the, the, the markets are going to make a huge dive. Uh, this has been uh, building up here, but I think especially over over the last couple of months, I think we're starting to uh, to see more and more of that. And I think that's terrifying. I think it's terrifying for people that have their entire future tied up in in the stock market because you see how uh, unpredictable the stock market tends to be. I mean, they talk about how it's always growing, but in reality, we're talking about a handful of companies that are growing and uh, everybody else not really doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, the people at the top are making the making the most money, and they're getting those high returns, and that's kind of what sets tax liens and tax deeds apart, is because a regular investor uh, can go out there and purchase tax and certificates, and those tax liens are guaranteed returns. So they're going to be backed by the the property itself. The property acts as collateral for the tax and certificate, and then you have an opportunity to earn a, a double digit return. Uh, so really, you know, you're looking at one of the safest investments that's really been around 
for for decades uh, with a with a property uh, with an investment that's backed by by state law and also is backed by real estate. Yeah, they're uh, it's a unique investment in that way. Something that's different about us as well is how we teach and train on on tax liens and tax deeds because they're obviously very different investments uh, with different outcomes, with different benefits and uh, and advantages. Uh, and so we, we tend to approach this differently. But the reality of it is the people that are in, invested in the stock market are looking for long term gains. You know, they're looking for uh, ways to earn essentially a good high interest rate return. And, you know, for that, they have a tremendous amount of risk. But like Steve mentioned with tax liens, it's a really safe way to invest and you can earn high rates of returns and it's not difficult. You know, something that's very simple earning 16, 18% annually on tax liens is incredibly simple. It's, it's something that you could do in terms of the, uh, the decision to buy the property within a few minutes, making payment arrangements with the county is not that difficult. It's not as hard as you might think to earn a really good high rate of return on a safe investment. That's what liens are all about. Um, we also, we're gonna talk about deeds, but that's for a strategy for people that want to acquire property. You know, we've got two different distinct uh, objectives here. You know, earning high interest rate returns and, and acquiring property. And depending on which one of those you're more interested in, uh, you know, we would point you in one direction or the other. Yeah, definitely. Now, the property tax system is, is the fundamental system underneath uh, tax sales and why they work. And it's something that uh, most of us are familiar with to a degree. You know, we live in, uh, in counties or municipalities that provide a number of different services to the people that live within the area. Uh, so uh, we're talking about things like local police departments, fire departments, um, the public education system is a huge expense that, uh, that costs counties a lot of money. Uh, you also have all the county services themselves. Counties do a lot of things now, uh, more so now than they've ever done before. And there's a lot of money required in order to keep those things going. And their number one source of revenue are property taxes. Um, so uh, it's those property taxes that are paid that basically make that possible, you know, to have those types of services. Yeah, most of the services that we actually use at least a lot of them on the local level are going to actually be coming through the municipality, through the county government. You know, just like Shade mentioned, schools, roads, fire department, police. Uh, and so they actually provide a huge amount of the services that we use. Yeah. Now, when we're talking about tax liens, tax deeds, any of that stuff, what's important to remember is that we're talking about enforcement systems. Okay, these are enforcement systems to ensure that property taxes get paid. And so everything that the county does with this process is about efforts or attempts to get paid by the property owner. Believe it or not, counties have absolutely no interest in property. Even property that is, has been acquired by them, that is their property, they don't care. They don't want property. The only thing they really want is, is just to get the property taxes paid on time. And the reason why is because if we don't pay our property taxes to the county. It doesn't change the fact that the county, they have bills. They have money that is going out regularly, like for instance, um, for the public education system. You know, they've got regular money going out and if they don't collect enough of the property taxes, they're gonna have to borrow the money, which is gonna, which is gonna cost a lot. Uh, or, you know, they may not, they could default. You know, like we mentioned earlier, they have to have a good way of enforcing these, uh, these property taxes. And that's really what these systems are all about. Um, fortunately, one of the things that makes it a little bit easier is that property tax enforcement is something that is uh, dictated by state laws. And so I think what that basically means is that if you want to know how property taxes are enforced and what, uh, what powers that the state has uh, against property owners or how they might go about doing it, all you need to do is basically look at the state laws for the state that you're in or for the state that you're interested in, and it will tell you exactly what they do. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, each state is going to be a little bit different depending on, depending on the type of state, depending on those state laws, and we can go look at the state laws and figure out exactly how their tax sale system is, it works. And so the tax sale system 
selling tax liens and deeds, that's really the way the county, that's really the enforcement method the county uses to enforce these property taxes. So, you know, if, if, if they didn't have some enforcement system that no one had paid them, this ensures that people pay their property taxes because they don't want to have a lien on their property and have to, you know, pay high interest rates or they don't want to have a chance to lose their property. So, you know, 95% of the time people will pay off these taxes before going all the way through foreclosure. Mm. Hey, and also just something I wanted to mention here before um, before we get to the end here, um, and, and and that is if anybody here that's attending right now is is interested, we're in kind of a unique situation. We do uh, we do three day events uh, where uh, we're basically training in events and buying events. Uh, we do them in Las Vegas, and uh, we decided a long time ago that part of what we wanted to do was have small events where we could give people a lot of personal time and attention because that's really our favorite part of what we do. We like working with people and when you attend some kind of a, an event, you want to accomplish a lot of things and um, I think the, the most disappointing thing for people is if they go to attend some kind of an event and and it's uh, a lot, you know, it's a big event and half the time when you get there these companies are just trying to sell you into something else. Um, what we do is quite a bit different but what I wanted to tell you guys is that uh, you know I think we had six original openings here for this event, and we've got one opening that's left. This is on October sixth through the eighth, uh, and uh, basically we're holding it in Las Vegas. We have one opening that is uh, that, that's still available. And to us, if we can, you know, we would well. The difference between uh, between having five, six, or, or six people at the event is um, really just a difference, I think, in, in overall cost. But it's worth it to us to uh, to offer discounts to uh, to somebody that might you know that might want to go. So if it's a possibility that you might want to attend a, a three day event on October sixth through the eighth in Las Vegas, uh, then let us know. Um, you know the, uh, the 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 cost on the uh, on the event is twenty nine ninety five, but I think we'd be willing to work with somebody if they were if they uh, if they wanted to go. We might consider uh, doing something like um, you know covering something like a good chunk of the hotel or airfare or something like that uh, in order to uh, to have somebody come out so we make sure the event is filled. So if you're interested in that, be sure to let us know. Um, maybe after the event, you can you can. Uh, contact Steve Rye to, uh, to talk to us about it and we'll see if we can fill you in. Yeah, definitely. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty incredible event. I mean, you know, the fact that it's going to be so small and, the, and that we're going to have the chance to work with, with these individuals over three days, uh, you know, even before we're, we're, we're putting a lot of preparation and, and, and working with each one of these, this is really where we're going to create our success stories and and this is really where we create our testimonials and so uh, I think it's going to be a unique event I think it's going to be different than than any type of tax sell training that's been done in the past because of the fact that we're, that it's not just going to be a training there's going to be opportunities to buy uh, not only through the secondary market but through over the counter through online auctions it's going to be an actual event where not only training is done but also investors are going to have the chance to actually invest while at the event. Yeah, that's something that's different uh, with what we do. Um, the secondary program is, is one of our programs where we basically buy tax deeds and, uh, and liens and we, uh, we, we can generally buy liens and deeds really low. We bought enough that um, we don't buy unless we can get it really low. And so we, uh, we, buy, we buy stuff and we can turn around and sell it. To, uh, to members and the markup's not high enough to uh, to kill the profitability on it. It's still profitable for uh, for members and uh, so we're going to have an inventory of properties like that to choose from but then we're also going to be helping the, uh, the people there uh, focus on specific areas that they're interested in uh, and you know help them basically see what we can find in those uh, those areas to help them get started. So yeah I'm, I'm really excited about the uh, about that event. Um, but getting back into uh, into the tax sale, sorry to get off track here for a minute. Uh, you know, we're talking about those enforcement systems and how basically state laws are what control what the uh, the the county does to enforce property taxes and how they go about doing it. Um, you know, collecting property taxes is a big deal when it comes to uh, constitutionally. You know, uh, the 
taxation process is something that I think they're really careful about. And so in state laws where you're going to find it, when Steve and I started, it wasn't really defined as to like how systems were broke up. In fact, it was really confusing because there was no definition at all. We had heard of tax liens. We, we kind of knew that there were tax deeds, but there was no clear definition of what was what. And so one of the challenges in the beginning was trying to figure out how each state would work in a way that we could kind of classify and try to identify. And in the end, we figured out that every state in the country utilized at least one of these three systems. Uh, you know, and they were a tax lien certificate system, a tax deed foreclosure system, and a redemption deed system. Yeah, definitely. And and just like Shade mentioned, you know, essentially we that was something that kind of set us apart and and that's really kind of what created our program and and helped us help us work with the largest seminar companies in the country is that we were the first the first uh, program that we know of that that broke down the investment strategy and made it more simple explained that there's tax liens tax deeds and then we actually classified this new type of property or this new type of auction uh, and I guess it wasn't necessarily new but it's a different type of auction is redemption deeds and so that you know the term redemption deed is is actually used throughout the industry now to kind of describe uh, what those type of properties are and that was something that, that me and Shane created when we first created our program uh, back in the, in the mid 2000s. Yeah, and in, in fact, um, the more we've learned, the more obvious it's become uh, as to why tax liens and deeds have never become more popular, why they haven't uh, picked up more traction, why people weren't jumping on it. Because I've heard that asked many times before. People will say, you know, if, if all of this stuff is is really true about you know about tax liens or tax deeds. Why weren't people on top of this a long time ago? Why hasn't this been way more popular? And the reason for that is because it is incredibly confusing. I mean, you're talking to a, a couple of guys that have, that have been doing this for nearly 20 years now, and we're still telling you that it is confusing. You know, part of the reason for that is you have 50 different sets of laws that um, that are written to dictate and control that. And if you've ever written through, if you ever uh, read through straight state laws, you would understand the language that, that's used in, uh, in in how they describe that. Uh, so I think that there was a lot of, um, uh, I think people didn't really know and it's not very clear. And anytime you cross state lines, everything could change so dramatically that, uh, that uh, I think it was pretty hard for people to understand. Um, but fortunately, we we're able to kind of separate all those down into those three systems. And uh, one of those systems is the tax lien system. And the tax lien system is an ingenious system. This is really, I think, um, one of the best systems for, um, you know, for enforcement like this with, uh, with, with property taxes um, because they use these liens. You know, I didn't really know much about what liens were before we started uh, into this. And the liens have an incredible amount of power. I think they work perfect as, a, as an enforcement tool. Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, a tax lien is just really a claim against an asset. And so, you know, in this case, we're talking about real talk property. We're talking about real estate. Uh, and it's placed by the, the government taxing authority against the delinquent taxpayer. And so what that lien does is, well, we'll go through it here in a minute, but essentially that tax lien acts as collateral, uh, the property acts as collateral for that tax lien certificate. Yeah, yeah, in fact, um, tax liens, a couple of things to note about it that are really important. First off, you know, tax, lien, uh, tax liens are what are known as first position liens, okay? It means that it's a lien you can, that can be placed against your property that's first position, meaning it'll take priority or, uh, or precedence over other liens, including something like a mortgage, you could say, or um, anything that would be on that property. Uh, so that lien, basically, what it does is uh, it doesn't, it's not covering just a portion of the property, it's covering the entire property. So if you lay down your property taxes and they place a lien against it, so let's say you have $1,000 you owe and you haven't paid that, the county will create a lien for $1,000 and place it against your property. That literally means that that lien, that $1,000 lien is using your entire property as collateral uh, for, uh, for it to be repaid. Uh, I mean, essentially what we're talking about happening here is the county places the lien against the property, but that's only so they can sell the lien. 
that's the only purpose in really creating the lien is so that they have something they can sell uh, to uh, to investors uh, as a way to collect the money faster to collect it now. And so, you know, by creating this lien and placing it against the property, uh, they can then sell it to investors. Now, investors are interested in buying these liens because according to state law, these things will pay out a set rate of return, um, meaning that every uh, the later you are with any kind of a bill you you pay, the more it goes up. And property taxes work the same way. If you don't pay your property taxes off, they continue to go up all the time. Well, um, in the case of a, uh, of, a, of a tax lien, the county will sell off a lien to an investor. So basically the investor gives the county the thousand dollars for this lien because it's going to pay out an 18% interest rate. What it means is that that interest is going to accrue until those property taxes are paid off. So he can hang on to that lien for a year. Property owner has time. They're not going to lose their property immediately uh, because it's delinquent. Um, but their bill is getting bigger and bigger the longer they go with, uh, without paying it. And, uh, and eventually it's going to come to a decision. Um, you know, eventually either the lien is going to need to be paid off, uh, in which that means it redeems, means uh, that the, uh, the investor gets a check in the mail for their initial investment plus the interest they've earned, uh, or the uh, investor gets the right to foreclose on it. I mean, really, you've only got a couple of possible outcomes. You either have redemption or foreclosure. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what makes tax liens, you know, more simple than tax deed investing is that, you know, 95% of tax liens are going to redeem. So most of your tax liens, the property owner is going to pay off the debt before, before you get to the point of foreclosure. But that's what makes it nice is that if the property owner doesn't pay you back, then you have that foreclosure right. You can go ahead and foreclose on the property and it'll kind of depend on the individual state with how that foreclosure works. Sometimes you'll be doing the foreclosure. Uh, in other cases like the state of Florida, you're going to do, fill out what's called a deed application and the county's actually going to foreclose on the property and offer it up for the deed sale. So, you know, tax liens are a little bit different, but essentially what you're going to be getting back is, is most likely you're going to be making back your money plus the interest rate return. And so, you know, most tax liens are going to offer a pretty high return. They're going to go between eight to twenty-four percent. Yeah, and you know what? Buying good tax liens, investing in good tax liens, is incredibly easy. It's so easy, uh, and and that's because, <clears throat> like Steve mentioned, ninety-five percent of these things plus redeem, and that's because nobody wants to lose money to the county because of delinquent taxes. Nobody wants to just lose their property, you know, in a in a foreclosure and most people don't because their property taxes are such a small percentage of what the property is worth. I mean, if you think about what your property taxes are on an annual basis, it's probably uh, less than 1%, maybe 1%. Uh, and so most people are not going to allow um, a small debt like that to, uh, to cause them to lose their property. But when you are buying tax liens, Remember, most of these are going to redeem. That's actually what you want to do. You want to buy tax liens that you believe are going to redeem. And, and that's because they've been placed against properties that have significant value. So um, you could say significant value could mean things, um, also meaning significant use. Maybe the property has some type of use and value. Homes are all like that. These are some examples of, of liens, uh, I think, that are currently built. Or yeah, well, essentially, one thing that we do when we, we do our three day is we uh, not only have secondary liens, but we also have over the counter liens available that we've researched. And these are some of the ones that, we're, that we've essentially gone through over this last week uh, that are gonna be available for our, for our students or our members to purchase in the three day. And you can see, uh, you know, there's tax liens. So these are essentially over the counter tax liens. We can see that they, in this particular state, they offer a 14% interest rate and, and even though these aren't flashy properties, uh, you know, these, these are still going to be great investments. When we're looking about how much the lien is versus the property value, uh, you know, we're looking at three different structures here. They're all earning a 14% interest rate, and really you're looking at a, you know, tax lien that's between uh, $379 up to about $1,400. Uh, with property values anywhere from 55 to 89. So, you know, each one of these tax and certificates are essentially going to be backed by these individual properties. And if these tax liens if, aren't paid off within that redemption period, then the tax lien certificate holder can go ahead and foreclose and become the owner. Yeah. In fact, if you look at each, uh, each one of these, 
you know, these are all going to be most likely to redeem, and it's easy to see why there's so much security here. You know, you've got a $70,000 property with $1,000 worth of taxes that are owed on it. Uh, that's almost always going to redeem, and, you know, when that, ha when that occurs, basically, you're going to get a check in the mail. But if you buy enough liens, you're also going to foreclose on property because that's the other possibility. We're talking about that other 5% of properties that don't redeem. And basically being able to foreclose on these properties means you're going to pick them up for a really low price, which is also going to be just an absolute home run. Okay. So if we're talking about earning a good high interest rate return, there's just no safer, easier way to do it than, um, than with liens. And if we're talking about acquiring property, that can also happen through liens. You know, you buy a lot of liens and you're going to end up acquiring property, which is just going to add to your overall returns. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in, uh, in acquiring property, you know, we'll end up talking with you more about deeds. Um, and we've kind of already talked here. Really, the most important thing I think to remember with liens is that there's only two outcomes here, okay? Uh, you basically have and they're both dependent upon what the property owner does. It all depends on the property owner either paying off their taxes and fees or not paying off their taxes and fees within that redemption period. But if they pay, then the lien's removed. It basically means redemption. You know, the investor gets a check in the mail. If they don't, then the investor can use that lien to pursue foreclosure on the property. It will foreclose on the property, but it'll essentially be one or, or the other. Yeah, I mean, to kind of piggyback off what you're saying, you know, there's really only two scenarios. One also thing to add is that on the day of the sale, that's when the the redemption period will start. So, you know, that's when we're going to be looking at the actual redemption period starting. So if as a two-year redemption period, that redemption period, that interest rate actually starts on the day of the sale. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the redemption period is important because it's basically that time period that the investor has to wait before they can take action. So if it's a two-year redemption period, then you've got to wait two years before you can go to pursue foreclosure. Um, you know, because of that, tax liens are also kind of a long-term investment generally. You can't predict when a, a property owner is going to pay off their taxes and fees. They might do it at the very beginning of the, uh, of the redemption period, or they might do it, uh, or they might not do it at all, or at the very end. You really can't predict that. So it is kind of a long-term uh, it's more of a long-term strategy. Uh, it works best with the types of funds that you would generally use for something like um, well, long-term funds, like, like, like retirement funds. Uh, it works perfect for. And, you know, when it comes to the overall rate of return, that's going to range in places. I would say the lowest that, 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 that we see uh, is, what, around 10 to 12 percent is maybe the lowest. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I think there's, there's, you know, some that are a little bit lower, uh, but usually they're going to be 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 percent. Yeah. And again, this is accruing every month. Okay. So uh, you're not going to see something, but it's accruing as you hold it until it redeems. You know, that's basically what will determine, uh, what will determine the, uh, the rate of return. Yeah. And that, and so if we're looking at 18 percent in Florida, that's going to be broken up over 12 months. So essentially you're going to be earning a percent and a half per month. So you're not going to automatically get 18 percent. It's going to be earned 18 percent over a year. Uh, now we'll talk about redemption deeds here in a little bit in, in a few minutes. But, the, you know, that's where did that full redemption period or that full uh, return period. And it's more called a penalty uh, versus an interest rate. So with tax and certificates, you're, that interest rate is essentially going to be broken up. So if they go ahead and pay after six months and you're earning a percent and a half per month, you know, you're going to earn, you know, 9% over that time frame, or if it's the month after 10% or whatever. Yeah. Now, tax liens might be perfect for you um, as an investor. It might be exactly what you're looking for. It's not necessarily based on acquiring property. It's just based on really safe investments that earn a good high rate of return. But some people are looking for other ways to make money, meaning that uh, they're trying to maybe build up their working capital. Okay, so um, if you're in a situation where, let's say that you only have, uh, rather than being the, the investor that's got a half million dollars in their retirement account, they're trying to figure out how they want to, to make money with that. Uh, if you're an investor, let's say that you've got 
$10,000 in an account and you don't have a retirement and that's what you're trying to create, then you need a different vehicle to do that. You need something that's going to work much faster and it's going to give you the opportunity to earn lump sum returns. I mean, essentially what it means is you need um, a faster method uh, that is uh, going to give you the power to acquire. You need the, the power to buy low and sell high. Okay, and you need to be able to repeat that process over and over again uh, because you're trying to build that capital up. I mean, a 15% annual return is great, but you need something like a 1500% annual return uh, by buying and selling uh, versus, you know, trying to play a little bit safer with tax liens. Yeah, with tax liens, I mean, you know, you're not buying tax liens to acquire property. There's certain things you can do, strategies you can pursue that, that help increase your chances. But if you're just looking to acquire property, if you're looking to make money like Shade said, you know, if you got $10,000 and you want to turn that $10,000 into $100,000, well, tax deeds is going to be the way that, that we would recommend uh, you do that. Yeah. Tax deeds are really simple. Um, basically, what tax deeds states do is uh, they give the county the power to foreclose on properties, on delinquent properties. Uh, and they give property owners a redemption period. So uh, it might be a redemption period of three years, uh, of four years in, in some cases. Um, it ranges depending on the state. But the idea though is the counties will make attempts to collect that delinquent amount during the redemption period. But if the property owner doesn't pay it off, then the county themselves will just foreclose on the property. And they will offer it at an auction uh, with uh, the opening bid being what's owed on the property in taxes and fees. So basically, if uh, the property gets an opening bid amount, then the county gets paid uh, everything that's been owed on the property uh, before in order for it to be foreclosed on. Uh, so the, uh, the county is really only interested in collecting that amount, which is basically their intention when they foreclose on it. Yeah, so I mean, the difference between a tax lien and a tax deed, or with tax deeds, the county's just going to hold on to that debt, uh, wait out the redemption period, then go through the foreclosure process and create either a tax deed or a quick claim deed, and then they offer that deed in a tax deed auction or a tax foreclosure sale. So when we talk about tax deed foreclosures or the foreclosure sale, you know, this is an actual foreclosure. You know, we hear about mortgage foreclosures. And the difference between a mortgage foreclosure and a tax foreclosure, it, there's actually quite a bit of difference. Uh, with a tax deed foreclosure, you're actually going through a true foreclosure process, which means that going through that foreclosure, they're going to create a tax deed. And in addition to that tax deed, it's going to erase any of the, the, the mortgages or, or judgments or anything like that. That's what makes tax deeds unique. That's the reason we would always go to, you know, with a tax deed foreclosure or a mortgage foreclosure is the fact that that foreclosure process has helped eliminate any of those additional debts that may be on the property, except for an additional governmental lien. Yeah. You know, years ago, year, yeah, before we start with tax sales, uh, I would sometimes hear investors or people talking about um, trying to, uh, to buy foreclosures. You know, they were talking about, Foreclosures, and I saw it as being a, um, a a type of real estate strategy, where, you know, where you could buy properties at a much lower price. Okay, but the reality of it is, um, what most people consider foreclosures don't really have a lot to offer, at least compared to tax deeds. You know, maybe compared to other stuff in the market, normal market prices, they're a good deal. But when you're dealing with a bank foreclosure. Really what's happened is you have somebody that borrowed money that defaulted, and uh, we've all seen that, that happen before. The bank doesn't ever actually have to take the property through what's a real foreclosure. Real foreclosures happen through the courts, okay? And they're based on state laws. But mortgage companies don't have to do that because when you sign your, your, uh, your mortgage contract, you basically sign away your rights to a uh, judicial foreclosure. And what it does is it gives the uh, the mortgage company or the lender, the power to foreclose on your property pretty quickly, uh, which is why you know somebody misses a couple of months, suddenly they're out, and the uh, the lender can turn around and sell the property uh, to somebody else. And really, this is a way that lenders make more money than they would otherwise. They're not losing money; they're making more money because they collect all the money from this person 
uh, you know, for their down payment and all the years that they pay, and then they default, and then they turn around and they repeat the process. They do it over and over again. They make more money this way, and when it comes to buying this stuff, they're not, I mean, they might mark it down a little bit over what its market value is at the auction. Maybe they sell it for 10% off, um, you know, maybe maybe 15% off or something like that, but any money they don't collect there is just money out of their pocket, and they're a bank. They want their money, so they're not going to sell it for a super low price because they have a personal interest in how much how much it sells for. Counties don't have that personal interest. You know, they don't care. Anything above that, they don't even keep the money. It just sits in an account for them. So as long as it gets an opening bid amount, it, for counties, it's sold. So banks just can't compete with that in, in any way. No, no, not at all. You know, here are, here are a couple tax deed examples. Uh, and, and these were actually just purchased within the last week in a, in a pretty highly competitive market. So, you know, we wanted to show you a couple of examples in areas where, you know, there was actually some, some pretty good bidding on each one of these properties, but there's still huge amounts of profit to be made even with the competitive market. And so that's something that we'll see here in tax deed investing. You know, these are both <clears throat> two homes that were purchased in Florida, three bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath. And we can see that they sold between thirty-two and $50,000, but there's potential profit on each one of them between about forty-five thousand on the first property and about eighty thousand dollars on the second property. So even in a, in a in a in a pretty competitive market, there's still going to be opportunity to to purchase property. I mean, if you're to talk to a normal tax a normal real estate investor and say, "Hey, I've got a property worth eighty grand. I'll give it to you for thirty. Uh, most investors, you know, would 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 flip to get that type of opportunity. Yeah, in fact, yeah, it, it normally won't happen because. Other parties they have their own personal interest in the property, and you know, therefore, they're not going to just give up money. The tax sale is the only place you're going to find where the county doesn't have a personal interest in what the property sells for. As long as it collects that that initial opening amount, uh, the county doesn't care, and so that's part of what gives tax deeds, um, you know, such tremendous power is that. Uh, it might open up at 10% of what it's worth and the county will sell it for that or for whatever else because they don't care. They don't have that personal, uh, that personal interest in, uh, in the property. Um, here are some other examples, including what is really, I think, become one of my favorite investments. When we first started, I thought raw land was, um, well, certainly raw land, there can be junk land, there can be a lot of risks associated with raw land, but there's also a lot of raw land with tax sales. You know, people are more likely to lose a, a little piece of raw land to, uh, to uh, delinquent taxes than they are something like a home that people live in. And so you tend to see more raw land that ends up in, uh, in, in tax sales, but a lot of it is incredible. You know, our favorite stuff, like this one on the bottom left, um, are my favorite types, the ones that are obvious building lots in, uh, in kind of newer communities. Um, and that deed costs $500. We buy, we buy these types of properties all the time. In fact, I would almost swear that's, that looks like one of the ones we bought. Yeah. Yeah. Both of these are, are properties that we purchased. Uh, you know, the one being on the left, uh, you know, a, a, a nice building lot, you know, the homes within this neighborhood are about, 130 to 170,000, uh, and so you know you're talking about a good building lot uh, within it within a newer subdivision that was able to be picked off uh, off the books for you know 500 dollars. Uh, the property on the left uh, is a commercial property, 1.4 acres, uh, with 750 dollars, but you know has worth about 35,000. So with these type of a deals, you're not going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, but if you could pick up a building lot like, like this. Turn around and sell it for uh, even even five thousand uh, dollars. You've just got a huge return off of your off of your five hundred dollars. Yeah, in fact, it's uh, definitely something that we do differently. I think than than most anybody else. Uh, part of what's attractive about this is the really low cost in order to acquire it and and pick it up. Uh, we're talking about investments for under a thousand dollars, which. Uh, in normal real estate investing, less than a thousand dollars is not going to get you much. But in this case, you know, you're getting, I mean, less than a thousand dollars would get you properties that are worth a lot, you know, properties that, um, you know, you could turn around and sell for a significant profit. You just don't find these types of deals 
around very often. And if you throw in a concept like, let's say, seller financing to this. So let's say you've got this building lot on the left for $500, you know, that you picked it up for, uh, and it's, uh, it's estimated to be worth $25,000. Um, if, uh, if you wanted to turn around and sell that that quickly, you, there's obviously a lot of different prices you could, you could put up there on it. Um, but let's say you want to create a different type of income from that. You can offer seller financing on it. And you could sell it for, um, let's say you sell it for $10,000 because you want to try to move it quickly. And you tell people you're willing to, to, uh, to do seller financing on it. So maybe you take, um, maybe you take a couple thousand dollars down on it, which think about it, this only costs you $500 initially. So collecting 2000 down, you've already quadrupled the money that you paid for it. Plus in offering the seller financing, you set up a monthly payment <clears throat> with the buyer that they will basically pay until it's paid off. So maybe they're paying you uh, 150 or $200 a month uh, for, I don't know how many years it would take in order to pay that, that amount off. Uh, you basically are able to start bringing in this monthly revenue with it. And you don't actually, just like the bank, you don't actually transfer title until somebody's paid completely for the property. So you're never at any risk of losing anything. If somebody defaults, then you just basically sell it again. Yeah, that's one of that's one of the great things that we like so much about land. In fact, you know, we'll be going through and, and teaching our, our investors at this three day uh, exactly how to find these and buy these properties. And we, we also go over it with our members uh, that are part of our website, our membership on tax sell support. So, you know, there's there's just a ton of opportunity out there with getting involved with tax deeds. And so if you if you want to get involved with real estate, there's really not a a cheaper way for you to get involved in in the real estate market through through tax deeds. You know, I've been involved in real estate. Uh, you know, since you know we've been involved in real estate really since since 1999, 2000, uh, when we first got started with this. And so throughout that whole time, we've never seen a better real estate. You know, a better way to purchase real estate. Even as a real estate agent, there wasn't a better way to do it. No, yeah, there's definitely. In fact, yeah, one thing I can guarantee you is that. Um, the, the tax sale system, you know, tax deeds, it, you're talking definitely about the cheapest way to acquire property, period. There is no cheaper way to do it. Uh, and there's not even another way to even duplicate it. You know, it, it is, uh, it's unique in that way. And uh, it varies from state to state, but uh, in just about every deed state I can think of, though, you can find some of these incredible uh, deals and opportunities because so many people uh, look past the land. The only thing they're really interested in, hey, I, I want a single family house, um, which you can find some of those. Uh, but again, there's a lot more land in single family homes. And so uh, we have this strategy with uh, with these, with raw land really tends to uh, to work pretty well. Yeah. I mean, the way we look at it is, let's say there's a $100,000 home and a $100,000 piece of land. Well, that $100,000 home might have co a lot more competition and maybe bid up to 35 or maybe even 40,000 if it's really desirable, where that, that $100,000 piece of land may only, you know, bid up to five or $10,000. And so, you know, for us, there's a lot more profit in, in one versus the other. Yeah, in fact, we also love over-the-counter lists uh, because, you know, you might have that $100,000 property. You might actually have lots of those. You might have 10 of those for every, you know, one piece of property you have that has improvements. And so, uh, is, you know, there's just so many of these types of properties and counties have a hard time getting enough investors out there to buy up their stuff in the first place. Um, and many of them are just targeting the improvements. And so the, uh, the raw land gets ignored, but it's also easy to buy out of state. When it comes to, uh, to buying property out of state uh, with improvements, you need somebody to lay eyes on a property. You need somebody to be able to say, hey, the property is still here. And, uh, and, you know, it looks like it needs this or it needs this. With raw land, what's going to change about the property, you know, uh, condition-wise? What is it you need to be worried about so much? Uh, and really, there's nothing there with raw land. As long as, uh, you know, the land is, is still there, which I'm sure it's going to be there, it's not going to lose value. You know, there's nothing that's going to be wrong with, uh, with, with the property, but there can definitely be things that are wrong with, uh, with improvements. Yeah, I mean, that's, re that's really one of the biggest differences. Uh, you know, especially if you're investing out of state, is if we're talking about a structured property, we always recommend having a current photo of the property taken. So 
if you're out of state, you're going to need to have somebody go by and take a picture of the property. If that's a real estate agent, if that's somebody you hire, we kind of go through how to be able to do that uh, is through our membership. But essentially, you're going to need to get physical eyes on the property because you know the, the condition of the outside is going to be an indication of the condition on the inside. And so there's going to be a lot more risk associated with build with buying a home. Now that's not we don't recommend buying structures. Uh, it's just going to be a lot more work. In fact, we're going through the same process right now where we've purchased a couple of, uh, uh, of single-family homes and, and mobile homes and things like that in a state. And we need to get somebody to go out there and go through the property. And, and it's just going to take a lot more work than one of our building lots that we were able to just put on the market and turn around and sell a lot quicker without uh, some of this headaches and hassle that comes involved with structured property. Yeah, there, uh, there really is something to be said for the, uh, the simplicity of of just raw land, um, but for deeds, if we're talking about uh, needing a way to uh, to build up money, there's no better method than deeds because if as you can imagine, uh, you're able to pick these properties up for such a low percentage of what they're worth. So there is tremendous profitability there uh, if you can select the right properties, and uh, and also if you've got a good exit strategy in place. To um to monetize those properties, you know, a way to uh to, to actually make money with them. Um, redemption deeds are that third system that we talked about that were um kind of a hybrid system of the two. And um, in other words, you know, they're not quite tax liens, not quite tax deeds. They're um a little bit different. They're basically like tax deeds that have a redemption period attached to them. So if you can uh, picture a tax deed. Uh, the property is foreclosed on, and you're buying a deed against the property. So all of that is the same, but what's different is that after you buy it, there is a redemption period, which is basically a, a last chance effort for the property owner to uh, to be able to redeem the property. And what that means for um, for the uh, the investor uh, is that you couldn't turn around and immediately sell the property because you may you have to wait out this redemption period. Um, so uh, it means you could be waiting for a period of six months before you'd be able to turn around and uh, and actually transfer title on it. Yeah, and, and with redemption deeds, there's a few things that separate them or, or that make them different. Like Shade mentioned, they're, they're really a tax deed with a redemption period. But one thing is that they will many times pay a penalty versus an interest rate return. And what I mean by that is in, in Texas or, or in Georgia, uh, they offer, in Texas, for example, they offer a 25% return. And so regardless if that, pro, if that uh, tax deed redeems after one month or if it redeems after six months, you're still going to get that 25% return. So with a tax lien, it's going to be broken up over the 18 months with the redemption deed. Uh, or a lot of these states are going. It's going to be a full penalty. So if it redeems after one month, or if it redeems after eleven months, it's going to be that same twenty-five percent return. Or in Georgia, a twenty percent return. Also with redemption deeds, uh, some of some of them are going to have some ownership rights. For example, in Texas, uh, after purchasing the property, you could live in the property, you could rent the property out. You're just not going to want to put a ton of money into that property because the property owner can still redeem it within that redemption period. So, with redemption deeds, a lot of times you're getting more rights than you would with a tax and certificate. The property has already kind of been foreclosed on. They just haven't finished recording that foreclosure, or finished recording that deed with the county until that redemption period is passed. Yeah, in fact, um, that's something you'll find with every state. Uh, is that they, they don't want the property owners to lose their properties uh, because of property taxes. In fact, uh, you know, I think they try to come up with the best compromise in, in systems because keep in mind when they, when, they, when they founded America, it was to get away from, uh, from <laughs> oppressive governments, uh, places where you would lose your property if you were a little bit late with your property taxes. And I think that's why they put so much thought into property tax enforcement when they did begin to tax properties here. Uh, it was because they didn't want people to be powerless with it, and they didn't want it to happen fast. And the reality of it is, nobody in America is losing their property quickly. Okay, when it comes to uh, foreclosure with property taxes, it's not a fast system. It's not a um, it's not a predatory system. Granted, there are places you can lose your property faster than others, but 
every place gives you a lot of time so that people have plenty of time. They basically use it as like a last resort uh, when there's nothing else they can do because they can't have 20% of all their property owners not paying property taxes or whatever that percentage may end up being. So they've got to have some kind of recourse that, um, that they can take. Uh, for the part here of investors, so if we're, we've already talked about liens, deeds, and redemption deeds. Um, if we're talking about ways to invest, so as an investor, how can you get started? What are the different ways that, uh, that you can buy? Um, there are really essentially four strategies or ways that you can go about buying uh, tax liens and, uh, and tax deeds. Um, and really we specialize in, in, uh, in each one of these. You know, some of these are methods that didn't really exist 20 years ago. So they're new too, uh, which, is, uh, which, is, which is pretty amazing. I mean, it's something that just didn't exist. It's a new real estate opportunity that, uh, that, that didn't exist that long ago. Yeah, so essentially the, there's four ways that we can invest uh, you know, either through live auctions, online auctions, over the counter, in the secondary market. So what we'll go through is we'll kind of we'll go through and explain each one of these strategies. But these are the ways that that you're going to invest, uh, that any uh, investor is going to invest. The first one is the oldest method. It's it's a method that's also the most commonly used still. And these are live auctions. All right, these are live tax sales held on location. This is what counties um, originally started doing. Uh, to sell off their uh, their liens and uh, and their their deeds, you know, by holding these uh, these tax sales, and so attending a live auction or a live tax sale is an awesome way to learn how this works. Originally, when 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 we started with this, we could only learn so much from materials and from books, and most of those were wrong about so many things, and it was us attending auctions and starting to buy stuff 15 years ago or 20 years ago that, uh, that really started to teach us. Yeah, I mean, in fact, we really did, didn't know anything about tax uh, sales at all until uh, my broker in 1999 invited me to attend the local tax sale. And I, I had no clue what it was. As soon as I got back, I talked to Shane about it and we got pretty involved in it after that. But this is the most common method. And, and so if you, it doesn't matter where you live, uh, if you live in the United States, there's going to be a tax sale taking place that this year within your state, uh, a live auction. Even if there's a lot of online auctions within your state, there's still going to be states that have a lot. Every state's going to have some type of live auctions. And so this was really how we, we even, just by going to the auction is really how we created our strategies, how we put together our investing methods and our research methods, how we looked and saw emotional bidding and saw people that got emotionally involved and, st and took it out of that investor mindset. And so we, by attending the auctions, that was really some of the most educational, educational things we could do uh, to get started in learning how to do tax sale investing. Yeah, there's still a ton of opportunity in live auctions because uh, with live auctions, you're talking, in a lot of them, you know, you have to be present there in order to participate. Some of them will allow you to do mail-in bids and things like that, but for the most part, your competition is limited by whoever can attend that auction. So uh, if you've got a local sale that, that takes place, it's a good idea to attend that auction because uh, it, it isn't open to everybody. You've got a limited amount of competition, and so uh, the prices tend to be lower for, uh, for live auctions than you'll get with things that are a little bit easier to participate in, with, um, with, which is like, for instance, with our second strategy here, or the second uh, buying method they have, which is online auctions, which is um, something that was really just getting started about 15, uh, about 15 years ago. We saw some of the first online auctions, but what happened with online auctions has been amazing. I mean, it's like a, uh, it's like a new investment strategy that didn't exist a number of years ago, and it's really easy to participate in. You know, that, in fact, that's part of the reason why we're starting to see some of the online auctions get more competitive is because people are beginning to realize, hey, this isn't that hard to uh, to get registered for this auction to participate now to buy good properties i think takes a lot more expertise but online auctions make it possible for people to participate from anywhere yeah exactly online auctions have a ton of opportunity and there's also a little there's a little bit of drawbacks as well but uh you know and it would just be that competition but even those properties that we showed earlier 
uh, you know, the ones in Florida, those were purchased through an online auction. And so, uh, you know, the counties will either will either, will either either create their own website using one of the software providers or they'll use an online auction platform like Bid for Assets. And so essentially, most of these auction websites or most of these online auctions, the county's done a lot and the companies that host these auctions have done a lot to train you on how to participate in the auction, uh, what's involved in the auction, they're going to have the rules, the information, the facts. And so, you know, once you participate in one of these online auctions, there's going to be a ton of information available on each one of these auction websites or the, uh, the auction page, the sell page, that's going to help educate you about the sell. So that's one thing that's nice about the online auctions is really some of the training that they provide, even the practice auctions and trial auctions, for you to get a chance to practice before actually doing it. Yeah, we bought um, we bought homes, um, lots of raw land at, at, at online auctions. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success with online auctions. We've had a lot of success with over the counter stuff, uh, and and we've uh, we've had a lot of success with with live auctions. Really, um, with you know each three of uh, of of these uh, methods, and we've got some of the different online auction providers listed right here. Um, you know, these companies that are currently doing this, and these companies are uh, these websites really gaining in popularity, I think, and uh, and it's getting easier and easier. They provide more and more information. There's less footwork you have to do, uh, which is something that's changed for us. You know, it's, uh, we really, it's been dramatic how much easier it's getting over the last, uh, over the last 15 to 20 years, um, which uh, over the counter is probably one of our favorite methods um, of buying. And when we're talking about over the counter, we're basically talking about any tax liens or deeds that were offered at a sale, whether it be an online auction or a, or a live auction, um, if properties don't sell, counties can place them back on the books. Sometimes they'll hold another sale to try to sell more, but some counties will also sell them directly to the public after the sale. So if somebody wants to buy them, it's just a matter of making payment arrangements, uh, meaning that you can buy these. If it's a deed, you can buy it for the minimum bid amount. If it's a lien, you can buy it for the lien amount, but you're going to earn the maximum interest rate return amount when you buy the you know over the counter. Uh, so there's some real advantages to over the counter, uh, and it's one of our favorite methods because it's a little bit more of um, a search. It's a little bit more of the needle in the haystack, trying to find the diamond in the rough. We go through more property records to find uh, the properties that we think are best, and we find some great stuff. Yeah, it's a little bit more of a treasure hunt. But even in the examples that we showed you today. Uh, the four tax liens that we showed you were all are all available uh, over the counter, and also the two tax deeds, uh, the two building lots that we showed you, those were an over the type over the counter type of sell as well. Uh, and so, uh, you know, there that's where there's a ton of opportunity. Of course, just like Shade said, there's going to be, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of properties on there, and there's going to be junk property as well. But that's kind of the fun. That's that's part of what makes tax liens and over-the-counter investing fun is going through these lists and and finding these these diamonds in the rough. And you're going to find, uh, you know, every type of property. We've seen every type of property imaginable, from commercial to homes to residential to land to to really everything you can think of on these over-the-counter lists. And so there's a huge opportunity, uh, you know, just on property tax list up. You know, I mean, just on uh, taxsellsupport.com, we have literally, uh, you know, hundreds and hundreds of lists with thousands and thousands uh, of over-the-counter tax liens and deeds available, even hundreds of thousands. Yeah, but you'd be amazed. I and mean, there are some counties that you'll get into, and their their over-the-counter list has been building up for years. And so, you know, they have a, you know, they might have thirty thousand or fifty thousand pieces of property that are sitting there. Uh, on their books that you can begin to go through. It's it's incredible when you start to um, to dig into it. Um, but you know the main point with over the counter investing to uh, to get across is that uh, it's the the easiest way, definitely safest way to uh, to earn that maximum rate of return. Because again, that's the default. You know, if you buy an over the counter lien, you're automatically going to earn the uh, the highest rate of return, um, which is uh, which is a major benefit. You know, you can uh, you can earn that high rate of return without really competing with them um, with with anybody, and uh, it's also a way that you can foreclose on on some properties. You know, if you have properties that have been sitting on the books for a while, uh, they uh, that redemption period is is ticking away. It began on the date of the auction, whether the tech, whether the liens or deeds sold or not, 
So, uh, you know, it's important when you're looking at these, uh, you know, to, to find the right ones, but there's so much opportunity there. Yeah, it's just a matter of going through these lists and evaluating and determining which properties are going to be a good investment. Now, you know, over-the-counter deeds, um, like we mentioned, you're basically able to pick these things up for the opening bid amount. So we're talking about some of these lists that will have thousands of properties on here. And the, um, the opening bid amount, which is a lot of times we're talking about 5% or 10% or 15% of what its value is these can be purchased for that amount, all right? There's no strings attached. You're buying it. Uh, they're making you, you know, they're transferring over ownership. Uh, you're, you know, you're, you're the, basically you become the property owner. And in terms of whether um, the property is really yours, the property's just been through a judicial foreclosure, a real foreclosure, not like a bank foreclosure where they say it's a foreclosure, but it's not really. They're just basically selling it to somebody else. A true judicial foreclosure is amazing because it has the power to wipe out or extinguish anything attached to the property. If it didn't have that power, then it wouldn't work as an enforcement method because, um, you know, somebody was late on their taxes, the county would go to foreclose and, you know, you like to foreclose, but there's these other things against the property that have priority or have precedence. So they wouldn't be able to do so. That's why it's, uh, that's why judicial foreclosure is set up the way that it is it will wipe out any of those encumbrances or liens. So in a lot of ways, buying a tax deed is way safer than buying a lot of other, you know, regular property because regular property hasn't been through this judicial foreclosure process that's going to wipe out or extinguish anything else attached to the, uh, to the property. So all of that stuff could still be there. In fact, um, we generally won't even mess with a lot of pre foreclosures with tax sales because, um, you know, it's a strategy where you could go out there and contact property owners beforehand, but you don't get the benefit of that foreclosure. And therefore, uh, they could still have all of those different properties, I mean, uh, problems associated uh, with them because they haven't been through that foreclosure. That judicial foreclosure is powerful. And it also makes these, uh, you know, over-the-counter deeds so cheap. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really what sets this investment apart is the fact that it's going to go through that foreclosure process these properties are going to be essentially we're able to get either a tax deed or a quick claim deed on these properties. And so at that point, you can go ahead and turn around, you know, uh, wholesale it. We can, uh, you know, really do whatever we want with it. But the advantage of it is, is the amount that we're purchasing these properties for. I mean, really, you could honestly just purchase these properties, and this isn't a strategy we recommend, but you could just buy and hold these properties and still make a huge amount of money because if you're buying real estate for 10 cents on the dollar and in the real estate within that area is going up five or 10 cents a year, you're just essentially even, you know, essentially it's paying for itself it was, is the, the property increases each year. Uh, you know, not only that, but you have the opportunity to turn around and sell it or just start seller financing or owner financing. And so it just really gives the investor a lot of opportunity to go a lot of different ways once they've picked up one of these properties. So a lot of exit strategies, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, in fact, we have members that, um, that buy, they buy property to add to their real estate portfolio. And this can just be random property. I mean, they, it almost doesn't really matter what the property is. They buy it. They basically have a long-term buy and hold strategy where um, they buy the properties, and there are a lot of tax advantages, I think, for um, you know for pursuing the um, you know the system like this. Uh, but they basically just buy onto this stuff and they hold on to it, and they're able to show, all right, I have a portfolio here with um, 35 properties in it, estimated at $500,000, and they're able to borrow against that. And then like Steve said, um, you, you know, as property values increase, first of all, they paid almost nothing for this property. And so it's also, as it increases in value, they're earning money, plus they're able to borrow against it, uh, which also gives them, you know, tremendous power. Uh, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, with, uh, with real estate when you buy it at that low of a price. Uh, now this, uh, the fourth buying method is, is one that is pretty new didn't really exist that long ago, but it's also one that we're heavily involved with, and that is the secondary market. Um, secondary deeds and liens are basically any lien or deed that is resold. Okay, so uh, that's not necessarily any kind of a special term. What is different is what we do with secondary properties, and the reason why um, 
the reason why we created it and uh, and what it will do for members. Basically, a way to save you time, but to also enable you to be successful faster. Yeah, and 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 to kind of talk about secondary tax liens and deeds, just kind of having a quick understanding of the difference between the primary and secondary market. So it's pretty simple. You know, the primary market is the term used to describe purchasing tax liens or deeds from a local government. So you're purchasing these either at the auction or over the counter. Essentially, you're buying them from a government entity. The secondary market is any tax lien or deed that's sold by a private individual, by a company, uh, after the auction has taken place. So this tax lien or deed has already been purchased uh, by an investor, and this investor is selling it to another investor. And so that's the secondary market. So it's pretty simple to determine what is the primary and what's a secondary market investment. Yeah. Um, in terms of the benefits of the secondary market, look, we worked with a lot of people. We probably worked with um, in excess of 50,000 people over the years and some of the time with the our companies. And we got a sense during that time of uh, what made students successful, where other struggled. And, you know, the reality of it is there's a lot of stuff. There are many steps in the process here to being successful. You know, you have to learn the investment, and then you've got to figure out where you're going to invest, and you've got to search for the right investment in sales or different places until you find it, and you can buy it. And, and then once you buy it, then you can go through the process of trying to monetize it. Let's see if we can sell it or, uh, you know, get it uh, rented out or used in, in some way or another. And what we realized during that time is that there are just so many steps in that process uh, that a lot of people fall by the wayside somewhere in that process while they're trying to buy. Well, we wanted to figure out the best way to speed it up. What's the best way we can do this? And what we realized was there were a lot of people that had, really, they had capital available. They had more, they had more money than they had time. And they wanted to be successful with this. What they needed was an easier way to buy. And so that's really why we, uh, why we originally created the secondary market and started doing this was so that we could help members uh, that wanted to do this to basically buy and when they start with secondary properties basically you bypassed all of the other steps and you're able to jump right up to the point where we're going to monetize this property so we've got one thing we've got to worry about here and that is let's sell it and uh, and you know by doing so we're able to speed that up but we're also able to you know get them closer to the point where they're making money and it's a process that they can duplicate over and over again which is what people actually started doing is we've had people that have started to buy more and more property from the secondary markets turned out really well. Yeah, I mean, really, the only, the only drawback at all of the secondary market right now is that we can't buy enough liens and deeds to be able to provide the need. And so because of that, that's the reason and, until we can increase the amount that we're able to get, uh, we just kind of really used our three-day and our coaching students uh, for our secondary market program recently just because there's so much opportunity uh, and there's so many properties and there's so many people that want to get involved in it. Yeah, you know, um, the uh, the secondary market has been really, it's been an, an interesting experience for us where we've learned a lot about it. Um, and really, I, we feel better right now about where we're at with small groups and with the direction that we're going with things than ever before um, because we're able to, uh, I think, to work more personally with people help them more and it's just a fewer number so you know for the people that we do end up working with it works out great because we can spend a lot of time with them uh, to help ensure their success um, so again if uh, if you're interested in uh, in possibly attending that October event for that one ticket that we've got available um, send an email to uh, to Steve or I today and uh, we'll get back with you and let you know uh, let you know on it here um, and you know we haven't scheduled the uh, the next event yet. Uh, we'll we'll let everybody know. I mean, think, yeah, we generally do these things a, a couple times a year right now. Uh, but you know, if it picks up down the road, we'll certainly let people know. Um, but if it's about membership and you want to join Tax Cell Support, um, which I think is also the best thing a person can do if they want to get involved with this, because again, it's twenty nine bucks a month, but it includes a lot of materials and training. Uh, includes you know weekly member uh, webinars with us and uh, and also we offer support to uh, the members try to help them out with that uh, with what they're looking at but uh, also the access to all the lists is such a huge time saver 
I think this is the best thing that somebody can do if they're interested in tax sales uh, that will enable them to learn it without overpaying uh, and, uh, and you know, I think provides more resources than anything else. And we're not going to try to, to we're not going to try to sell you into some $20,000 package, you know, that you need to put on all your credit cards or something like that. Uh, everything we do is up front. So, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're interested in tax sales at all, tax sales support, uh, com is definitely, I think, the direction to go for signing up for training because I don't think you're going to find anything close to the cost that will offer you as much value. No, I mean, absolutely not. Uh, you know, really, you know, this is very similar to the program that the seminar company sold uh, when we were doing it for, you know, $3,000. And we were able to sit to uh, fulfill and to provide training to literally thousands, tens of thousands of students that purchased that and was able to still keep it. Uh, an A plus rating with the BBB and so really what kind of sets us apart is you're not going to be calling a huge huge company and get you know uh, pawned off to somebody else when when you're working you're working with me and Shade uh, you know we are we are the we are the only people here we're the people that are running this and really in addition to our own investing in our own this is really kind of a love for us this is something that, that, that in fact uh, after we quit working with the seminar companies, we spent a year doing just doing other things, doing personal investments. But it was the you know the love of training, the love of teaching others about tax liens and deeds, and helping others become successful with it uh, that really drove us to to start tax support and to get back into the training side of it uh, because it's something we love to do. Yeah, there's really nothing I think better than helping somebody uh, empower themselves, which is really what this is. When you learn how tax sales work, the reality of it is tax sales are complicated enough that by the time you grasp and understand them, you're going to understand every type of real estate investing. Uh, and, you know, yeah, I, I have to agree with Steve in that uh, this is uh, something that, uh, that we do because I think we enjoy that and we love to see people, we love to see people be successful. There's nothing better for us. Than, uh, than having members contact us to tell us about a successful deal they just did. And we get that stuff all the time. We've had, I'd be willing to bet we've had more successful members than any other company out there. Uh, most, of, most of the companies out there don't track their success and they don't have success stories. And yeah, we've got, uh, we've got hundreds uh, of, of success stories dating back so many years. Yeah, I mean, dating back almost 15 years. So this is something we've been doing for a long time. If you're interested in tax liens and deeds, uh, in, interested in learning how to do it, you're not going to find a better opportunity, uh, you know, than $29 a month. You can cancel at any time. Uh, and, and that's going to include everything. That's going to include the home study program, 750 court, our real estate program, all of our books, our videos, access to our weekly training webinar with us each week, uh, the members forum, uh, you know, the list. It's just, it's just, I mean, it's a huge amount of services that are available. Uh, and really what we want to do is provide everything we can to help our, our, our members become successful. Yeah, there are a lot of things there that will help save you time. You know, that if you're going to be serious about it, you've got to have it anyway. Like, like the list service. You know, we used to spend so much time in the beginning just looking for lists. So, um, and we just want to thank everybody for joining us here today. Uh, this uh, workshop's been recorded, so we'll have replays of that available and, and that, uh, that we can send out links for. Uh, so we will uh, we'll do that. But we always appreciate everybody that join us every week. Uh, and again, if you have any interest in that uh, October 6th of the 8th, we've got that one ticket left available there um, that, uh, that we're willing to uh, basically offer discounts for just to have filled. So let us know on that. Uh, but other than that, you know, good luck with your investing with whatever you decide to do, whether it's with us or, or, uh, or, or something else, you know, we, we hope you find success doing it. Yeah, have a, have a great month, great week. All right, we'll see everybody later.